So this is uh, Into the Depths on uh, March 23rd, 2019. We have the honor of having Daniel Jedediah Cook with us today to finish the presentation on living Hebrew letters, facilitation into the living Hebrew letters. Go ahead, Daniel. Yes, thank you, Bill. Thank you. Let's go ahead and uh, frame up today as we begin to get started, uh, I want to take my time as I go through the rest of the living letters. And, and uh, so uh, we've got plenty of time to be able to go through that because I want Yahweh to be able to have the full opportunity to say what needs to be said for today. So Yahweh, I declare that now that, that things that are being said today will be the things that you wanted having been said today. And Yahweh also declare, as, as Anushka and I were talking about earlier, and Anushka, I hope you don't mind me using that, but it was a beautiful example of just this, in, in how uh, the perfection and, and how we walk in perfection was like the rabbis used to do when they would, uh, the rabbi would, would, would tie his, his it, tie, take a rope and they would follow along behind the rabbi as he walked down the street and is a way of, of signifying uh, being in line with Almighty Yahweh. So Yahweh, we declare that today for just this moment that that as we're walking together here, not necessarily in the sense of a rope uh, in the rabbi, because Yahweh, I'm grabbing a hold of that rope right behind you as well as all of us are here. And so we declare that we, we line up with that perfect will <clears throat> of you today. And uh, we want to thank you for, for, for what you're showing us and, and the revelation of your word in us and through us. We thank you, men in white linen, for being a part of this here today. Wisdom, we thank you for, and your handmaidens for being here as well. And yes, Yahweh, that we line up with your perfect will today. Amen. 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 So, <clears throat> excuse me, y'all. <clears throat> excuse me. My apologies. Uh, the, we left off from Tet the last time we talked, if I, if I can recall correctly. And uh, so I wanted to start today with Yud. And it's, it's, I believe it's very, very fitting that we're actually starting off with Yud today because the truth is, is that Yud is literally one of the, one of the meanings of that means the little that contains much. Uh, if you will, it's the dot uh, that, that, that is, is placed and, and it's, it's, the, it's the place of creation. And uh, so there's a lot of different concepts that kind of go along with the living letter Yud, but one of the ways that, that uh, I've seen it before is, is, is not only as a place of, of the beginning and the creation of, 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 of who we are, of, of the very existence of the, of the universe that we see, there's a Hebraic concept I don't want to get into today because it, it's just so much to it that it would, it would take up the rest of the hour just by talking about good and Zim Zoom. But uh, one of the things that I see whenever I see Yud is that con the Hebraic concept of uh, Zimzum. And because it's, it's the place where Yahweh, I do want to say this much about it. Because it's the place where Yahweh took of himself, and one of the ways that he showed it to me was in a beautiful description of how he took a garment and he placed it over his light, if you will, a veil. And he took this garment and began to spiral, taking very, very precise care of how he was laying out this garment over his light. Now, not all of his life, just a portion of his light. And he laid this with fervent precision across and made, making sure that the boundaries were set just right and that it was exactly as he had intended it for, for it to be. And then he took of his light, and with, with his hand, he placed the light in the center of that garment. 
because now there was a veil to the light. If you will, there was a place of darkness uh, that he had placed over himself as a veil, not as a, we, we, this was not an absence of light. It was just a veil of light. And when he spoke that light and, and placed that light into the center of that garment with his hand and with the breath of his, of his word, he spoke and the light that was in the center of that, of that garment exploded into existence. And when it did, it really formed the very creation that we see right now, the stars, the, the unit, the galaxies that we see and that sort of thing. And it's a, it's a funny thing because this, uh, to me that the, the, the you, you've got the, the Hebraic concept of this 5,000 years before science really began to understand. And then finally agree that the big bang was, was the way that our, our universe started. And the, 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 the Jews have been talking about this for thousands of years uh, with regards to the, um, the place of creation. So this little dot of light that he placed into this garment, this veiling of his light was uh, the Yud that began all of that, the little that contained much. And so it's, it's, uh, it's, Yud's one of those beautiful letters. Of course, Yud is also the first letter of yod Hey vav Hey. And so when we begin to see some of the connections with that and his name, we see another beautiful aspect of that. And again, I won't get into that part today uh, as far as the yod Hey vav Hey, but that's, a, it's a, it's an awesome conversation uh, with regards to the, the, the way the living letters work together, even in his name. And they reveal not only who Yahweh is, but who we are, even in the midst of, of, of his name. And so with, with Yud, one of, the, one of the Hebraic concepts behind Yud is that every single letter begins with a Yud. So every time a pen is taken and placed on a piece of paper, it, it starts with a dot. And then the letter is formed as a result of the dot. So if you will, even Aleph, the very first letter in the, in the Hebrew alphabet, begins with a Yud as well. So it's, a, it's, a, it's just a really cool letter that, that begins to open up a lot of, a lot of different perspectives. One of, the, one of the other ways that I see Yud is also that of a seed because it's the seed of, of creation, if you will. But another one of the ways that I see Yud kind of has to do with, with our responsibility and the aspect of that. Because our own words, as we, just like we were talking about earlier, as we begin to hear the word of, of Yahweh, we talked about, when we talked about hey, how hey was a framing letter. And it began to frame the words that we were speaking. And so Yud is that seed. It's that, that seed that was inside of the Dalet of hay. If you guys go back to the first, uh, the first meeting that we talked about this, there was a Yud found inside the Dalet. And so this is the place of the beginnings of, the, of, the, of, of taking Yahweh's word and returning that word back to him. And scripture says that word will not return void. It will accomplish all that I have set out for it to accomplish. And so Yud is the beautiful picture of just that because it's the process of the beginning of that seed, if you will, or that word that is taken frame and now has begun to become manifest in, in the earthly realms. So, um, it's, it's beautiful. Like I said, I could probably talk for a, another little while about Yud <laughs> as far as that goes. But Lamed, Lamed is the next living letter. Excuse me, Kof is the next living letter. <laughs> My apologies. Skipped ahead of myself. Kof is the next living letter. And uh, Kof is one of those, also one of those be beautiful letters that probably is one of my one of my favorite in the midst of of the living letters all of them are my favorite but 
I've learned so much from Koff. I, I really, I, I, I see him in a lot of different places. Because one of the meanings of Koff is, is like the palm of the hand. And when Yahweh first began to show me this, <clears throat> I was reminded of my, my daughter when she was younger. And, you know, when she would, you know, Saturday mornings, we would get up and we'd have some family time and eat breakfast together. And, and we would, uh, she would, she would want to do something like draw or, you know, uh, make something or, or something like that. And so a lot of, a lot of what she liked to do was a lot of crayons and, and drawing pictures with the crayons and, and so on coloring book. And, uh, so I remember when she was little, how she would take and draw a picture and, 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 or fill in the crayon colors of a, of a coloring book. And when she was finished, of course, she was, she was, she was proud of what she did and she wanted us to be proud of what she did as well. So she would, she would bring the, 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 the picture over to us and say, mommy, daddy, see what I made you. And, and, and she would have it in her hands as she reached out her hands for us to be able to grab a hold of it and uh, take a look a little bit closer at what she had created. And when, when I started thinking about when Yahweh started showing him about the living letter cough, I was reminded of that story right there because, you know, in essence, my daughter was coming up and saying, behold, look what I've created. Look what I've done you know, for you. And so one of the, one of the ways that I've seen from, from the living letter cough from that point was, was the, was, was the fact of beholding and beholding, beholding Yahweh and becoming what we behold. So I've always seen cough, not only as the palm of the hand, but funny enough, I've seen cough as a mirror. And I'm not talking about me looking into a mirror where I see the reflection of the state of where I am right now. No, it's, this mirror is a little bit different because I'm looking into the face of Yahweh. And the, 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 the mirror that I'm seeing is the face of Yahweh himself. And what I see reflecting back to me as I look into the living letter cough is his reflection reflecting back in me. He is showing me the, if you will, the completion from the beginning of where I am even right now, regardless of my situation, that, that I can look into his face and he shows me who he has always made me to be. And the reflection that I see back is that man of who he has always made me to be. So to me, cough has been that place where I can, I, regardless of the situations that are going on, I want to remain looking straight directly into the face of Almighty Yahweh because as I do, my features, my, 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 my body begins to change to be just like that. But yet, at the same breath, what I see of that is the reflection of him uh, in that. So there's, there's a process. I guess what I'm trying to say here is that, is that he's showing us the completion from the beginning but at the same time, there's a process with cough, if that makes sense. Does that kind of make sense, uh, Bill and yes. Ishka? So, so it's it's kind of a, a a dual dual process there with regards to that. So, wow. <laughs> but yeah, I'm sorry. I get sometimes I get wrapped up in yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, to get to use a. A, a Justin term get whacked a little bit, but cough, like I said, cough has just been uh, one of those letters. Funny enough, the way one of the ways that he first uh, began to show me about cough was not only about the the picture of of my daughter, but also about Gideon and his army when he took him down to the water and Yahweh told him he said, uh, "The men who scoop up the water and place it." in their hands and drink from there. <clears throat> Those are the men, excuse me, y'all. Those are the men that I want you to choose that uh, uh, to, to, to form the army that's going to go in and, and destroy the Philistines. And of course there were 300 men that, that actually had done it that way. And so in, in, in looking at the palm of the hand, 
in that sense. The men had scooped up the water of Yahweh's word and placed it up. And so the part of the concept that I started seeing cough as a mirror was just in that, because if I don't go take water and put it in the palm of my hand, I can look down into the palm of my hand with that water there and see my reflection back. But at the same time, I can also see through it. And so again, it was another, another part of that, uh, a, a part of that where it wasn't looking at the current situation. It was again, looking into the depths of his word and seeing Yahweh's reflection back to me again. So it was just another perspective of that, that whole mirror thing that I saw. So uh, continuing on, because, because funny enough, Lamed follows along with that, because if you look closely on the lower half of Lamed, it actually forms a cough at the bottom part of Lamed itself. But then Lamed also has the additional tower that rises above the rest of the living letters. Matter of fact, Lamed is the only one, the only uh, letter in the Hebrew living letters that actually rises above the baseline of the, of the letters themselves. And, uh, but it's, it's the, the, the tower, if you will, or even, even from a slightly different perspective, the Vav, the man, if you will, is reaching up towards the Yud, because at the very top of, of Lamed, you've got a Yud with a Vav connecting the upper Yud and the Kof below. All right, if you guys can see that, I don't know if you guys can see my, my mouse or not, probably not. But uh, uh, Lamed is the second letter in, third row down from right to left. It's the second letter in. Remember the Hebrew living letters are, are seen from right to left and read, and read from right to left. So uh, bearing on the, this, this process of what's going on with cough, Lamed, Lamed is, is, reminds me of that, uh, that scripture. Uh, the name of the Lord is like a strong tower. The righteous run in and are saved. And you can see the tower that rises above the, the cough, if you will, of Lamed there. But one of the other meanings of Lamed actually talks about teaching, about learning. And so Lamed is, is, is also in the shape of the shepherd's hook. And so, you know, once again, I, I think of the, the beautiful story in scripture where it talks about how, you know, Yeshua would leave the 99 and go for the one uh, to be able to pull them and, and bring them back into the fold again. And so Lamed is, is similar to that, that, that shepherd's hook. So it's, it's, it's a place of learning and teaching. And is sometimes with our learning and with our teaching, we, we kind of go off a little bit. And, and, and this is not in a negative sense or, or, a, or like we're in a trouble kind of sense, but it's the loving Yahweh who just corrects us by, by reaching out with his, his shepherd's staff to bring us, to bring us back into uh, alignment, if you will you know, based on what we were talking about earlier, bringing us back into alignment. But the truth is, is that, that that's a part of our journey. That may be a part of our journey early, early on. But as we begin to mature, then Lamed takes on a whole other perspective rather than, rather than this place of, of this gentle nudging back into, into line. Because mature sons don't need that place of, of, of the gentle uh, nudges back and forth because we realize and we know that that who we are in him and we want to line up and and we want to be facing him again remember cough is the bottom part of lamed and so you know we have looked into the mirror of who we are and who yahweh is in the midst of all of this and we we know that we are looking like him and so we we automatically and 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 not just well not i don't want we just we just out of the depths of our heart we line up which actually brings up another good point because leb uh is the hebrew word for heart and it begins with lamed 
So you can see that that Lamed is, is the place of the heart as well. And one of the other ways that I've seen this is actually in the sense of the heaven and earth connection. And I know we talk about how, you know, we're talking about bringing heaven on earth and, and the, the connection of, of taking the framework of heaven and declaring it here on the earth. But to me, Lamed states just that because if you will, the upper Yud at the, at the, at the top of the tower that rises above the cough of Lamed is that place of the heavenly realms. And there's a connection between that upper Yud and the cough below. And so we have that heaven and earth connection in Lamed. So it's a, again, it's a, it's an absolute beautiful letter. Now, funny enough, <clears throat> I'm going to use this to bounce into uh, Mem. But uh, I was talking to a friend of mine the other day, and we, we've been talking a lot about water lately. And one of the ways that I, I, Yahweh showed me just this last Sunday, I never had seen it but this way before, but, but Lamed would be like a man who's standing on top of a diving board, <laughs> who's ready to bounce off of this place of learning and teaching and the things that Yahweh has, has, has shown us. But the purpose of that is to bring us to the place where we can dive into the mem. Mem means water. Mem means uh, several different things, but one of the main things that mem means is water. And so I saw this picture of, 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 us sta of me standing on the top of, of, of cough, you know, forming the letter Lamed, and then jumping into the water and being able to swim into the depths of the water. And uh, so I know it's kind of a silly way of looking at it, but to me it was, it, it was just awesome. To me, it was just an awesome way of, of being able to, uh, to see that because one of the things that Yahweh began to show me about Mem, and we talk about it around uh, our body anyway. I, I go to a local church here, uh, the uh, Gates of Zion. We used to be called the Rock of Mobile, and we've been talking a lot about Mem uh, lately. And uh, because there's, there's, there's a couple of different concepts that we can see with regards to Mem. One of those is the supply of heaven. And so if I, if I take the supply of heaven, or even better still, it's another perspective of the fullness of Yahweh. Now, I'm, I'm also reminded when I think about that to go back to Aleph, because Aleph is also a representation of the fullness of Yahweh. But this is from a slightly different, different perspective when I look at Mem in this way. Because the, the, the Mem here uh, is, is basically the supply of all that we need. And, and I'm gonna, I, 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 the only way that I can do this is by adding a Nun into the midst of this. Because to me, Mem and Nun are two letters that, that have to have each other, if you will. Because one of the meanings of Nun is actually fish. And so uh, as I began to, to think about this, it, it, I don't know why it ever hit me before, but uh, this has actually been a, a relatively recent revelation with regards to that. But where do fish live? <laughs> but in the water, you know what I mean? And so it was, it was like, okay, now all of a sudden this revelation began to grow of the mem and the nun and how it works together. Because I started thinking about it, well, as a nun, as a fish, then I have a choice to be able to swim in the shallows of the water. Or as a fish, I also have the, the, the right uh, to, to be able to swim into the depths of that water as well. And so I saw a, a, a place of, of, of not, only, not, only being, not only having a place where everything that I need is already provided for me, because let's think about a fish. You know, fish lives in water. Where does he get its oxygen that, that he uses to breathe? Well, it's from the water itself. And, and so the, the very, the very sustenance, sustenance of what the, the, the fish needs 
is found directly in that water. It's air. It's 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 breath. It's it's food. Uh, the 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 freedom to be able to go into the not only the depths of Yahweh but to the expanse of who Yahweh is. And it it just began to to, to grow this beautiful picture. And all of a sudden, I re- I remembered that scripture that we've heard for years and years and years and years. And, and we've, we've said, amen. I'm, I'm, let me, let me just say it from my perspective. Okay. I've said, you know, amen. That's awesome. That's an awesome scripture. But when I finally saw this picture, it suddenly made a whole lot more sense in him. We live and we move and we have our being. And when I saw that as me being a fish in the depths of Mem, I was like, of course, because that makes perfect sense now, because uh, because the fullness of who Yahweh is in this perspective of Mem is everything that we need. And so in him, we live, we have the breath and it's exchanged through the water that, that he has provided, the water of his word, the water of who he is. It provides the food, everything that we need. It provides everything that's possible for us to be able to move forward. Now, there's kind of a hidden thing in, in Nun that I may talk about a little bit when I get to a little bit later with a, another living letter, but uh, there's kind of a, a unique perspective in the midst of all of that when you're, when you're looking at it. So <clears throat> let me go ahead and move on to Nun. Now, Nun not only means fish, like we've, we've talked about and how the connection between Mem and Nun works, but Nun also means uh, sun. It means air, prince. It means the humbled prince. Because if you look at the nun, it's, it's actually a vav that has been bent over, if you will, in humility. That is the Hebraic uh, perspective of, of, of nun. So it's a place of, of humility because the sun begins to realize who he really is in Yahweh who he really is in him because, and there's, there's, there's a, a humility that comes along with that, but I don't, I don't want to focus necessarily directly on the, the, the humble aspect of that, although it's a beautiful aspect of it. I want to focus a little bit more on the sun aspect of that, the sons, the heirs, and we are his sons. And so, you know, once again, if we see ourselves not only as sons and Mem right next to that, again, it's that place of where we hit, where we live and move and have our being in him, also in the perspective of the water and the fish. So it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful and deep living letter. Right next to that, we also have Samek. Now, Samek is, is, an, is, is a unique living letter. And I'm just going to be plain and simply honest with you. Yahweh's given me some revelation of it. And here as of, of late, uh, I've one of the letters that I've cried out the most about to understand a little bit more has been Semek. Because to me, there is a, there is a mystery. Uh, there is a deep, deep secret that Yahweh has placed inside of there for me to, to, to be able to see and to reveal but I've not, he's, yeah, I've not yet seen it. But I, I mean, I have some revelation about Samek. That's not what I'm saying. But I, there's, there's, there's a deep mystery hidden there. Samek is is the uh, the letter that of all of the living letters is the only one that is fully enclosed of the 22 Hebrew living letters. And uh, so. Uh, now, the if you look down a little bit further, a uh, mem final, which is a final form of the mem, actually is fully enclosed as well. But um, the finals are are slightly different in the sense where they are the final versions of 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 the one of the twenty two living letters. And so, of the twenty two, Samek is the only one that is fully enclosed. So, I don't if you I don't know if you guys have heard the story or not, but this is this is a a, a Hebrew story where it talks about when Moses had gone up to the mountain and he came down uh, with, the, with the, the laws, if you will, or with Yahweh's word to the people of Israel, he 
came down with the, the first time with a sapphire cube. And in the sapphire cube, Yahweh had written the living letters into that cube. Now, I've heard some really beautiful descriptions of that uh, in the sense where because those, those living letters moved around in that, that sapphire cube. And, and it was just a, 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 a beautiful example of, of the, the living word of Almighty Yahweh in, in looking at that. But one of the things that was a little bit unusual with, with this is that Semek, being fully enclosed, had a place where it didn't have the inner part that was no, it was not connected to the rest of the sapphire cube. If you will, it was slightly separated by the distance, you know, that, co- that was caused as, it was, as Semek was written into, into the sapphire cube. So this inner part, instead of falling out, by gravity, you know, by the, by the natural perspective of it, we would have thought that that inner part would have fallen out and no longer been a part. And all we would have seen was just a, uh, if you will, like a hole where Samek uh, was. But instead, that, that inner part remained. And so one of the ways of looking at Samek is that of the supernatural support of, of Yahweh. Because in this place where that inner part remained in, it remained inside of that place of Semek. There was nothing to be able to hold it to there, and it, yet it remained. Uh, the, the Hebraic concept of this meant supernatural support. But one of the other ways that you can look at Semek is that of a, of a thorn. And uh, again, now, now we're taking the perspective of, of Yeshua, because if you will, Samek was the crown of thorns that was placed on his head. And so there's a, there's a beautiful connection even back into, uh, into Yeshua here with regards to Samek. So again, that's the living letter I want to dig deeper into. Uh, and and I'm, I'm, as Yahweh begins to reveal more and more to me, uh, then, then I will release more and more. But it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's really a... It's a, it's a letter of mystery, to be honest with you. Matter of fact, this is going to be rather interesting. Nun and Semek together create the Hebrew word Ness. Ness is the Hebrew word for miracles. So even in the, in the progression of the Hebrew living letters, we see a word that's formed in the midst of that, and that of being Ness and the miraculous uh, power of Almighty Yahweh right there. So I'll, I'm going to stop there probably and ask if there's any questions before I, I move on. Anybody have any questions? Oh, sorry. Could you repeat what you just said, the last part? Because I, I missed out. I don't know if it was my connection. Uh, we're talking about Could you the, the, the last line or two. Sorry. Yeah. I was talking about uh, the Nun and Semek uh, actually form a uh, Hebrew word. And the Hebrew word is Ness. Uh, Ness is the Hebrew word for miracles or the miraculous. So even in the midst of, of this, we see that the, uh, the miraculous aspect of Almighty Yahweh found right there. I think we lost the, uh, the living letters too. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it was my connection. Sorry. So it's, uh, okay. I'll just get it back. Did that help though, Anushka? I, I dropped off actually. Sorry, no, I didn't catch it. So, sorry. Oh no, yeah. I'll catch up with you a little later. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Sorry. Wrong, wrong chat. Yep. Sorry. <laughs> Give me a second. <laughs> it's okay. Mm. I mean, I can continue on without them. I just. No. No. Just sometimes having... there's something, some, some important line. I like to keep it. Yeah. Yeah. But Nun and Semek together means miracle. I'll, okay. I'll just kind of brief say it briefly. Uh, Nun and Semek together means, means miracle. So supernatural support, the miraculous, and so on. So Ayin. Now, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of you have, have probably heard of Ayin because it's a, word, it's a letter that has been uh, a lot of people encounter uh, as a first living letter uh, with regards to that because Ayin... Ayin means a, a lot of different things, but one of the things that it means is I. 
So in Ayin, uh, this is where I begin to have the revelation of Almighty Yahweh. And I begin to, if you will, see through his eyes. Well, not if you will. It's where I begin to see through his eyes is through Ayin. And there's a, there's a real unique perspective in, in Ayin. Because there's, there's a, uh, a living letter that, that uh, Apostle Aaron Smith from uh, Gates of Zion, the Rock, what used to be the Rock of Mobile, he's the one that found this letter, because I had not heard of this letter prior to this myself, but uh, the, the living letter Ga, which is not part of the original 22, uh, is, is actually found, it was mixed together with Ayin during the reign of Hezekiah. And now, not in this particular form that you see on here of the uh, Ayin, uh, a lot of the block form actually has a slight twist in that section that comes out of the out of the midst of the of the vav that's kind of curved there. The if the if you were the the left side of the Y part there actually has a little bit of a twist too, as an honor of of the fact that God was mixed with Ayin. In this place, so Ayin is this is is a, is this place of where we begin to see the revelation of who Yahweh is, and and not only his revelation of who he is and who we are, but of his creation of everything that is done of his story, of 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 his purpose, of his uh, of his dream for us. When when <laughs> I got to go back to this because when when Yahweh took that 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 garment and began to, to, to lay that over top of his light and he swirled it. He, he, he created, if you will, a vortex with this garment by spinning that to create the place where we, where we are. The place of creation. Oh man, I'm getting messed up now. That spiraling was the representation of the God that comes out of the Ayin there. And so, again, I begin to see this beautiful picture of, of his revelation and the spiral of creation, if you will. Uh, there's a lot of other stuff I can go into with that, but I, I don't, I, I'll stop right there with, with that part of that aspect of it. But here recently, I also looked at it a little bit closer, and what I began to see was if you will, that right side of the Y, the part that goes, you know, that's equal with the left part and then drops down below the lower part to, cre to create the Y that we see, if you will, the backwards Y, is actually a Nun. So we're going to go back to Nun again, but the Nun here has been opened up to allow the spiraling of, of Yahweh's revelation this place of the creation, this place of what we see, because what we behold is what we become. Let's go back to cough again. So this is an, another perspective of that in, in how the cough of beholding now has a place to be able to, to come out of, because we need to see, as we see the word of Yahweh, we're able to, to, to see what he's saying about something, and begin to form a paradigm or a pattern of thought of the of of how Yahweh is talking about that, and that's that's a place where He allows us, if you will, that co-creative response of who we are in Him to be able to take place because He's showing us His Word. We form the paradigms of what we we see Him saying, and that begins the process of us beginning to declare. Because the next word or the next living letter next to Ayin is Pei. And Pei is the place of, of, if you will, one of the literal meanings of Pei is mouth. So it really has everything to do with what the mouth can do. Pei can refer to that of consuming, so eating. Pei can refer to that of speaking. Pei can refer to that as, as breath. Anything from a gentle puff to a strong wind, you know, all of that is found inside of pay. <clears throat> I love it. Excuse me. Y'all. I love it because if you look closely at pay, 
you really can see the cough once again found in pay. The only difference is that you've got the yud or the yud dangling from the top there. And of course, of course, funny, one of the ways I've always seen that is, you know, every time you go to the doctor and they say, you know, open up and say, ah, and one of the things they're looking for is that uvula, that, that little dangling part in the back of our throat. And so to me, pay is a, a perfect example of that, of that little part of our anatomy that, that, uh, that, that symbolizes the fact that this is indeed talking about the mouth. But if we're looking into the letters a little bit deeper, I see the cough and the yud being a part of that. And so this is the, the place of the beginning of the speaking of that seed, if you will, the seed of the yud that we talked about in the beginning here today. And uh, so pay, pay begins to form and, and to, to, to speak and to declare and to breathe the, 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 the very heart of what Yahweh is, is, is asking or calling us to do. Now, right next to Pei, we've got Zadi. And Zadi is another one of my, my favorite letters because there's a, I've got a really cool story that, that goes into Zadi. And I'll talk a little bit about it because it actually kind of goes back to that of Mem and how Mem is a part of that, of, of, of the fullness of who Yahweh is. But it was in Zadi that Yahweh began to show, show me the perspective of the part of me that takes his word, his fullness, and helps begin to, to incorporate, that, incorporate that into who I am and to reflect who he is back again to cough. So you can see how these letters, I hope I'm not confusing anybody with this because, because you can see how each one of these letters, uh, especially here, begin to, to melt into one another. And uh, there's a particular reason why all of that, all of that's true. Because from Yud to Zadi, these letters are are the letters that I call the spiritual letters, if you will. These are the letters uh, that reflect my relationship with Yahweh, who He is, and who I am in the midst of all that. So these nine letters specifically are are can't help but work in and amongst each other because these letters specifically kind of uh, frame who we are in this place of being on earth right now. All right. And so in the honor of him placing us on the earth right now, <clears throat> we also have that honor of being the heaven and earth connection because of being sons. And so we're bringing heaven on earth, if you will. You guys, are you following me with regards to that? Zadi is the, is the kind of the culmination of, of all of that. Zadi literally, literally means righteousness uh, or righteous one. And uh, there's a couple of different ways that, uh, that you can look at it. Now, in the literal sense, <clears throat> it also means fish hook. So you can see it in the set. You, we, can, we, can actually, we can actually go back to that place of Nun again and incorporate that into this. But, but right now, I want to I look at a particular... A perspective of, of Zadi. Because as Yahweh began to show me Zadi, uh, one of the ways that I first began to, to look at this is as a man kneeling down, a man or a woman, but, but as, 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 as sons kneeling down with our hands lifted up, our face looking up towards heaven and uh, declaring and, and in, in prayer. So I saw this beautiful picture of the communion that we have with Almighty Yahweh in this place of prayer. But one day I, 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 was, I had this encounter with, with Yahweh, and he took me through um, what I call our secret place. And one day we were walking along, and we were communicating, but we weren't necessarily talking. But at one point we stopped, and, and Yahweh placed his hand on my back. When he did, uh, I, I, I felt him begin to reach inside of me at the same time. So it was, it was on the backside of where my heart is, is where he placed his hand. And his hand began to, to move onto the inside of me. When, he did, when it did, he got to the place of my heart and grabbed a hold of my heart. 
And of course, I was just in absolute, huh, what's going on here? Because funny enough, the first thing I thought about was, was, you know, in times past, how Yahweh would reach his hand into my heart and pull out the hardened things of my heart. And for some reason, I had this quick memory of, of, of that, where I was like, well, Yahweh, in this place of where it's just you and me, I, I, I didn't realize I still had a little bit of hardness in my heart. But he didn't, he never spoke. I just, I was, remember, we were, we were talking or we were communicating without talking at this point. But he just continued to, to grab. And when he did, I, st- I, I felt him begin to pull. And as he pulled, I noticed that he was pulling something out of the depths of my heart. Now, a root of that remained attached to my heart. But he began to pull it out. And, and as he did, he placed this, 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 well, I'll explain it. I'll just go ahead. This backpack, if you will, on my back of what he had just placed out in, you know, or what he had just pulled out of my heart and he placed it on my back. And so it, I, I, funny enough, I call it the Zadi backpack. That's exactly what I call it. Uh, But when, when he did that and he placed it on my, my, on my back, I looked at him and I was like, Yahweh, what, what is this? And he, in this case, he spoke to me. Uh, It was no longer communicating by, by just us communicating uh, through thought, if you will. Uh, He spoke to me and he said, everything that you are, everything that I've ever made you to be, everything you've ever needed, the, the, the words that I have spoken over you have always been inside of you. Now you have easy access to be able to reach into that backpack and pull out anything that you need to do with what I have, I've told you. And from that moment on, I, it, it suddenly hit me that, that I no longer had to worry or fear about, about things that I had worried or, or, or had fear about before, because in, in saying that he was not only referring to the fact that everything that he's called me to do has already completed in that Zadi backpack and the things that I need in this earthly realm to be able to pull those things into existence are already there. But everything I needed with, with him, with money, with finances, with, with uh, understanding was already there. But along with it came this uh, Ruach Yeroth Yahweh, the, the spirit of the fear of the Lord, one of the uh, seven spirits of the Lord. Because with that Ruach Yeroth Yahweh, uh, I realized that there were two things that I needed to be able to remove anything from that backpack. One was the choice. I had to make the choice to, to, to reach in there to, to do that. But the second was protocol or permission that before that I reached in there, that, that I asked for permission of Yahweh to be able to do so. And so, because, because in this place, I realized that I had the right to be able to pull out of that anytime I wanted to, but this spirit of the fear of the Lord just let me know that I needed to make sure that it was okay with him before I did it. I don't know if that makes sense, but to me, there was an honor and a respect and a protocol that came into play with this Zadi backpack. Funny enough, you remember I mentioned fish just a moment ago with Nun, because if you look at a Zadi, it's a Nun bent forward. Okay. So instead of looking up as as a man facing towards heaven with his hands in prayer, Zadi can be seen as a man leaning forward with a backpack. I I didn't see Zadi when he did this uh, uh, with me during this encounter. It was later as I was beginning to meditate on it that I recognized the Zadi that he had pulled out and hence the reason why I called it the Zadi backpack. Uh, But it's, it's the nun is leaning forward in that place of the journey. And so there's a journey that he's taking me on. And this backpack is the place of the, of the fullness of what, what he has promised for me. So if you will, this is the place inside of me as the fish that helps to take the things of the water of the fullness of who Yahweh is and be able to transfer them into the place of, of, of the earth, if you will. 
So to me, that Zadi backpack is kind of like the lungs inside of a fish that take the water and pull the oxygen out of the water and let the hydrogen go back out uh, as a part of the water once again. And so this was that place of the connection to me. I mean, that's kind of a weird way of looking at it, but to me, it made sense. Okay. So before I go on, because I think I'm going to be able to finish up uh, with the rest of these today, at least until Tav, uh, uh, won't be able to get into the, uh, the finals, but uh, we're getting close to time, are we not? Just about, yeah. Are we close? Okay. Okay. So uh, there was this beautiful connection here with, with this. Kuf, one of the things about Kuf is that is it's, it's one of those letters that sometimes can have a, 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 a dual meaning, if you will. Kuf means, uh, Kuf, believe it or not, actually means like copy or the sun on the horizon. Or one of the ways that I've, I've actually looked at it is as, as a man standing before a mirror. But this is a slight di slightly different perspective because you see the Vav and the Kuf that's, that's, that's right there that makes up the living letter Kuf. And uh, so, uh, but it, it literally means copy. Uh, funny enough, one of the Hebraic concepts of that actually means monkey consciousness. <laughs> Uh, in other words, monkey see, monkey do kind of thing that, that in the place of Kuf, that it can be seen as a place of, of, of copying or, or, you know, imitating someone else. And uh, so, but, but the truth is, is there's a, there's a, a beautiful aspect of Kuf, Kuf. In that Kuf is that place of the sun on the horizon. So Kuf can actually refer to time as well because of the process of time. And so in Kuf, we find, the, in, we find the beginning of a process, if you will, of running the living letters from Tav back to Aleph. When we move from that place of Kuf into, I keep saying that three, 10 different ways, Kuf, and I don't know why. As we move into that place of Kuf, if, from, if we're going backwards from Tan, to, from Tav to Shin to Resh to Kuf, to Zadi, then we see this, this, this movement of, of, of the changing of this. So uh, Resh, Resh means, uh, Resh means mind, Resh means head, uh, Resh means the primary thing, the most important thing. Uh, Resh almost uh, also can mean to be able to see around corners. And if we look at Resh, uh, actually there's, there's a, something unique here because Resh looks just like Dalet with one minor exception. You know, remember the old, scri the old scripture that, that we talks about not one jot nor tittle? You know, everything will be fulfilled. Well, in Resh, the only thing that's missing that would actually change Resh into a Dalet is a tittle. And that's the, the extension of the upper part of Resh. Uh, uh, there's a Yod there, or a Yod there, that actually connects, that would make Resh into a Dalet. So Resh is where I see not only that place of, of our mind, but in Resh I also see the mind of Christ. Okay, now it's a transforming in taking on the mind of Christ. The Resh transforms into the place of the Dalet. It transforms into the place of the portal. So it's this, uh, the Resh reminds me of that scripture, uh, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And Resh is that place of just that. Now Shin, whew, Shin, I, I could probably talk another hour about it as well, but Shin not only means fire, it also means tooth, uh, it also means to consume. So both, both teeth, as we begin to chew on the word of Yahweh, and as we begin to chew naturally, then we can see where, where, where shin can refer to tooth because there's a consuming. But uh, in the perspective of fire, fire also consumes. But the difference between the two is both, both states of matter 
are being changed from one state of matter into something different. So as we consume the food, that the food becomes the food that we eat into the place where our body begins to digest that and turns that into energy. So we can see the energy of, of Almighty Yahweh in the, in the midst of Shin. But in the sense of fire, fire also consumes, but there's a changing of the matter once again from, say, like a tree into that of, a, uh, of, of, of carbon, if you will, or of ash. And, and so there's a transforming from a slightly different perspective in that sense. But yet, if you take carbon or ash that's left behind from the consuming of a, of a, of a tree bark and compress it hard enough, what are you going to have? A diamond. So uh, Shin is one of those letters that, 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 to me, not only refer to both the teeth and the fire of Almighty Yahweh, to me, shin has also been an action word because both of those are, are actions. They, they do something. They change something from one form of matter to another. And in, in that sense, it's in shin that I'm transformed into being a son. As the fire of Almighty Yahweh begins to burn inside of me, I'm transformed into his likeness. Now, we can also add in the yod Hey shin vav Hey the Yeshua and the perspective of that, because, because in, in the shin here, the, the, if you will, Yeshua was the very action of almighty Yahweh in the earth. So even in the midst of the yod Hey vav Hey, as shin being placed in the center there, Yahweh is saying, I'm taking my, uh, my the fullness of who I am, the fire of who I am, the passion, the, 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 everything that I am, and I'm placing it into to Yeshua. And so Shin became that fire that, that changed us because now we had access once again to the Father because of the fall and, and, and so on. So Tav, Tav means marking. It means completion. It means a finishing. So in, in Tav, we can see the mark of a son. We can see the completion of a son. We can see that place of, of, of the, the fullness of what Yahweh has promised and the completion of what he has promised. And to go back to the way we began this in the beginning with regards to Aleph, you know, Anushka and I talked about the, uh, uh, the first verse there in, 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 he, in Hebrew in Genesis 1-1, Barashit bara Elohim. And then the next two letters are Aleph Tav. And we talked about how that was one of the ways that, that it could be seen is the, is the, de the de declaration of the living letters that Yahweh spoke into existence first as he then formed the heavens and the earth. So the living letters came before the, 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 the formation of the heavens and the earth. But... In this place, I also see where just in that alone, Yahweh was once again declaring the completion from the beginning in the Aleph Tav there. So he was saying, Barashit bara, in the beginning God created Aleph Tav. I'm talking about from the fullness of the very beginning, from the Yud that became the Aleph, that became the Tav. And it was the completion. So we see the uh, completion from the very beginning. I think I need to stop right there. So does anybody have any questions? Anushka, Bill, anybody else? I like hearing from you guys. <laughs> no, I don't have any questions for now, but that was awesome session. Wow. I really honor you, Daniel. Thank you so much. I honor you guys as well. Yes, I honor you guys very much. Yes, I, I have questions, but they're not going to be uh, a five-minute question, so I'll hold it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. oh, 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 so that's why there's a silence because everyone's questions are not a complex questions. They're not just a minute. <laughs> Understood. Understood. Well, I'm I'm available if anybody wants to ask. I mean, uh, we're all a part of this group. Ask away in the uh, in the chat. Perfect. That's good.
Thank you. This was awesome, Daniel. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Daniel. I feel like uh, even though we may not have complete understanding of everything that was said, that there was an impartation that's occurred. Yeah. And uh, I could feel the beginning of seeing the relationship between letters and, and concepts and, and, and personal journey from um, towards the end as you were getting down to the end here, I could start to feel that process happening in me, which I am so thankful for because it's just a little bit of stepping onto your journey. And I honor you for your journey. Your journey has been so unique and of such great value to the uh, universal Ecclesia um, and been of great value to us. I, I, I really believe that none of us, even though we don't have full understanding of everything you said, none of us are the same as we were before we began. Um, right. what has been imparted here today and the last time that you um, began with this. So yeah. thank you so much. This was a great eternal value. Thank you, Bill. Yeah, I want to repeat okay. something I think I said from, from the last time as well, because I see that question from, from Paula there. How do we meet these living letters? And, and Anushka is absolutely correct by engaging them. They are living beings. And uh, for me, when, when Yahweh first took me into this it was the way that i began to to see things was he not yahweh not only began to reveal himself he began to reveal who i am in the midst of every single one of these living letters so i began to engage with them and as i did the revelation began to grow and to grow and to grow and you guys have only heard just a small part of 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 some of the things that yahweh has shown me in the midst of all of this but it's absolutely that way paula just begin to engage with the living letters you know, begin to 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 uh, to to communicate with it, to talk to them, if you will, to to look at the letters and and ask them to reveal themselves to you, and he will do just that. And the truth is, is that each one of us have a unique perspective of each one of these letters. I've only got one little, small, tiny perspective of all of this. And the truth is, is that if I want to understand the fullness and more of the fullness of what Yahweh is showing me then I need you. I need each, we all need each other so that we can then begin to dialogue about the different perspectives of what we're seeing because there's depths found there and, and we need each other in the midst of all of this. So, so just engage, engage. I wanted to share um, just as you were talking now and just as Anushka had mentioned about engaging, I'm uh, entering into engagement encounter of uh, dancing on the dance floor. I'm not exactly sure which living letter it is that I'm dancing with, but there's a real um, beautiful uh, dance of oneness that's happening with one of the living letters and maybe the whole lot together as one on the dance floor right now for me. And I think that's maybe others can step into that encounter as well. What I think is that a lot of people, um, at least me personally, I seen that I experienced the Hebrew living letters, but I didn't know that they were the Hebrew living letters. Um, I seen them as beings, but I had I had no idea about them being the Hebrew living letters, and I interacted with them as beings. And so now I'm getting to understand from Daniel, you know, other perspectives of these of these beings that I've interacted with, and and continue to look forward to interact with them because they will engage you and maybe we're not conscious of it. Yes. Maybe we're not aware of it, but, uh, but if it's, if it's happened with me, then, then it will happen with you because uh, these beings, like I, I would love to share testimonies. It's just that uh, we're running out of time and I have fabulous testimonies with my, with, you know, just interacting with these living beings and how they engage me and what I seen and what happened. And um, we just, and that's why I, I think I said it the last time that what I feel is that these were beings because they're really powerful. And it's just that in the finite, they have become the Hebrew living letters to us. But in the infinite, they are different beings, but in the finite, which is the created realms of created light, um, 
they appear as the Hebrew living letters. But there's so much more than that once you yeah. step out of the confines of time and space. Like I've seen them out of the confines of time and space. And they're very different. Um, and so maybe you guys may want to take a look at uh, Jewish mysticism. Um, they, have, they have a lot of stuff about uh, each of the Hebrew living letters, how God created the world with them and so on and so forth. So, yeah, good to take a look into all of that. Yeah, amen. Amen. I yeah, also wanted to add something. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, well, go I ahead. wanted to add something, even with Yod, or Yod, um, which is Stan. String theory is based on 10 dimensions, even if you're looking at quantum physics. Uh, there may be more, maybe up to 12 dimensions, but understanding that with dimensions, that's why we have numbers 1 to 10, and then after 10, they start repeating themselves, 11, 12. Then they're not a totally different number after 10. And so, so what you see is that in string theory, with, even with dimensions, the dimensions start are not very stable after the 10th dimension. So the higher the dimensions, they start collapsing, and they're more stable at 10. And so there's a lot of stuff that quantum physics and science is proving, which was part of Jewish mysticism. Yes. So I wanted to say that. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Matter of fact, the uh, quantum theory is, is, is really based on the, the micro aspect of the macro of Einstein's theory of relativity. <clears throat> and if you will, one of the basic concepts of, of, of just that, of quantum theory, deals with the dot, the yud. It is the dot because it's the, it's the fullness of that. I've, I've heard it in the sense where, where if, if you were to take a piece of paper, because the way that Einstein talked about with his theory of relativity, it was a, a, a laminar sheet, if you will, of space time that gravity would then affect as, as, as matter was placed on that. And, uh, but, you know, the, the, the argument with that was if you go in deeper into that sheet, like a, like a sheet of paper, what you begin to see is that there are strings that join the, the fibers that create the piece of paper. But we just, we, we're not going deep enough to be able to see those unless we have a, a microscope or a magnifying glass to be able to see that. <clears throat> but you go even deeper than that and you begin to find that there are dots, if you will, that form up that allow that connection of the of the strings and the truth is at that level the deeper we go those dots don't touch they don't actually touch at that at that uh that super microscopic level or it's that's beyond microscopic but but you know what i'm saying that they that actually the 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 electromagnetic forces are what joins those together but it's actually not touching. So it, it reminds me of the living letter Chet because one of the, one of the aspects of, 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 of Chet is that it's uh, touching yet not touching uh, or hovering, if you will. Uh, when, 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 Yahweh, when Yahweh was hovering over the face of the deep, uh, he was hovering out of this place of, of, of Chet. So uh, yeah, it's very, very interesting. We, I could go on, you, know, you you get me started on on uh, on the scientific aspect of all this, and I'll talk for another couple of hours. So I better be quiet. But yeah, it's cool. It is cool. awesome session. Thank you so much, Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. You're welcome. You're welcome. Well, Bill, you want to go ahead and wrap it up then, or I'm going to turn the recording off at this point.